I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. We had another busy week. 10 drivers seeing action. Again, everything from the NASCAR Cup Series to Quarter Midget. It was a great week for the Race Face family of drivers as we visited Victory Lane nine times. Let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo was at Richmond International Raceway for the Federated Auto Parts 400 Salute to First Responders. Anthony took the green flag from the 30th starting position in his number 38 Golden Nuggets Casino Ford Mustang. Let's check in with Anthony for a quick post-race update. 26 today at Richmond Raceway. We made some tremendous improvements on our Golden Nugget Online Casino Ford Mustang. I uh, just started too far off, but we did get a lot better and drive up into the top 25 at the end, but uh, just unfortunately lost a little bit of time in that final green flag stop, so ended up one spot short of a top 25, but something to build on for sure. This has uh, been a track we've always struggled at most historically as an organization, so uh, some notes to, uh, to improve here and looking forward to that and the rest of the season. Up next for Anthony, under the lights at Bristol Motor Speedway on Saturday, September the 18th. Jesse Love was at Portland International Raceway for the Arkham Menard Series West Portland 112 on the 1.98 mile 12 turn road course. Jesse qualified seventh in his number 16 Napa Auto Parts Toyota and was running in the fifth position at the halfway break in what was already a very rough race. But the second half was even crazier, especially the last restart when the field took the green-white flag together. Watch this restart. Happens on this restart. Field spreads out down into turn one. Here comes Taylor Gray to the inside. We're gonna stack them three wide. Jake Drew misses the, misses the corner. Field scrambles through turns one and two. After the race, the ARCA officials made the call that Drew and Nasimeto missed turn two and were penalized, giving Jesse a third place finish and a 19 point lead in his championship defense with only three races left. Up next for Jesse, ARCA Menard Series at Bristol Motor Speedway on September the 16th. Then he will make the trip to Watkins Glen International for three days of racing in the TC America Series. Joey East was also at the ARCA West race in Portland where his day didn't start the way that he wanted. The team suffered a penalty for a communication issue during qualifying and had to start at the tail end of the field. Not sure what that was all about. Joey went right to work in his number 54, Nate Clower Motorsports, My Job Depends on Ag Ford. Joey raced his way up to fifth, but missed a turn and suffered a penalty and had to go to the back once again. Then he also had to make a pit stop for a flat spot on the right front. Yes, back to the tail end for the third time. What makes Joey such a great driver is he never loses his cool and always stays focused. Joey was also involved in that crazy late green-white restart, and when the dust settled, he was credited with a fourth place finish. Joey currently sets fifth in points, but only four points out of second. Up next for Joey, he will be making the trip to Bristol Motor Speedway for the Bush Bean 200, which is live on FS1 at 6.30 Eastern Time. Connor Mozak was at Watkins Glen International for the Trans Am TA2 Series races on both Saturday and Sunday. In Saturday's race, Connor brought home a fourth place finish, but then on Sunday, the North Carolina driver started second, took the lead on lap one, and never looked back, scoring his first Trans Am TA2 victory. Connor had a special guest at the race, Friends of Jacklin Foundation founder Dennis Murphy. All the race face drivers do such a great job raising awareness for FOJ. We're glad Dennis was able to attend. Up next for Connor, Trans Am TA2 at Virginia International Raceway on September 25th and 26th. Caden Honeycutt was at Tri-County Motor Speedway for the Cars Tour Harrison Workwear 225. 
Let's go straight to the driver for a post-race recap. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here, back from Track County Speedway in the Solid Rock Carriers Car Store. Uh, we had a hard day. Um, we started 16th and came back from 4th. Uh, first 40 laps was not very good for us. Uh, kind of have a four-wheel slide all the way through the corner, and we came in, made a change on lap uh, 45, I believe, and went from 18th to 4th right there, going through the field. Uh, battle with points leader Bobby McCarty uh, right there at the finish line for 3rd. Almost got him. We were side by side, but I can't tell you how many laps. It had to have been in 20, 15 laps. It was just an awesome race between us two. Uh, overall, we uh, gained as a team. I think me and Jason have connected a lot harder this weekend. Uh, so we'll be able to run that with Martinsville and the rest of the year. Uh, two weeks now starting Martinsville for the Triple Crown. So we're one point behind Peyton Sellers, who's in first. And we are second tied with Bobby in the Triple Crown standing. So it's gonna be exciting next couple weeks here in Martinsville and the Cars Tour. Uh, but I can't thank all my sponsors. Uh, Justin Johnson Racing, uh, Jason Chase, everybody that supports me and my family. Uh, just I appreciate every single one of you, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all at Martinsville and bring home a Triple Crown. Caden currently sets second in the championship points battle, heading to Florence Motor Speedway on October 2nd. But up next for Caden, Virginia Triple Crown at Martinsville Speedway on September 25th and 26th. Joe Valento was also at Tri-County Motor Speedway in his number 17 DGR Friends of Jacqueline Ford Performance Mustang. Joe qualified 19th and finished 11th. Let's check in with Joe for his take on the weekend. Hey guys, Joe Valento just wrapped up the Harrison's Workwear 125 at Tri-County Speedway. Uh, it was a battle today. We struggled in practice with not really having any good tires to run on being at the bottom of the speed chart pretty much all day long. Um, bolted on four fresh tires for qualifying, not really knowing what the car was gonna do. Uh, ended up running a, a decent lap, uh, still towards the rear. So we ended up deciding to come off before the start of the race to make adjustments in the pit and elected at starting in the rear of the field and uh, drove up and got dumped and then drove back up to finish 11th. So overall, really good night for us. Uh, made it work out for me but uh, a fun race nonetheless, being able to uh, work, work my way back up through the field and uh, get us an 11th place finish. Can't thank all the guys at David Gill and Racing enough. They put in a ton of hard work this weekend getting the car where I wanted it. Also Ford Performance, Nitro Lubricants, Napa Auto Parts, the Friends of Jacklin Foundation, and Race Face Brand Development. Up next for Joe, Cars Tour at Florence Motor Speedway on October 2nd. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll check in on four more of the Race Face family of drivers. We now head to Colorado where we find Cassidy Hines who was back in her pro truck at Colorado National Speedway where she qualified fifth, won the fast dash, and then brought home a seventh place finish in the A main. Let's check in with Cassidy for her post race recap. Hi everyone, I raced my Maco Tools pro truck at Colorado National Speedway this weekend and I feel like we had an okay night of racing. I qualified fifth, so that put me in the fast dash, which I ended up winning, so that was good. And then in the main, I ended up finishing seventh. 
I struggled all weekend with the old tires that we were running since we had to run them from the previous weekend we raced and we also struggled with the weather. It rained off and on all day and it was windy and the track was just changing all the time. So I feel like we had a pretty decent night of racing considering the circumstances and I can't wait to go back there again. I'd like to thank all of my sponsors, Fort Worth Screen Printing, Frontier Restoration, the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, LL Acousticals, Driven Race Gear, Commit to Fitness, and Race Face Brand Development for all of their help, and my crew at home helping with the pro truck and always giving me a fast truck. Up next for Cassidy, Pro Late Models at Las Vegas Motor Speedway's Bull Ring on September 23rd. Jake Bowman was at Irwindale Speedway in his legend car where he qualified on the pole but had to start eight with the invert. Jake drove to the front in just five laps. Then he led every lap, parking it in victory lane for the win. Up next for Jake, Pro Late Models at Nashville Fairgrounds on September 17th and 18th. Carter Whalen swept the weekend at his home track of North Georgia Quarter Midget Association by winning in Heavy Honda twice and Heavy World Formula. Up next for Carter, Oak Lane Quarter Midget Association this weekend, all in preparation for the big event there on October the 7th. Cole Denton returned to Chris Motorsports Park where he had been just about unbeatable in his number 46 Mellow Yellow Bandolero. Let's check in with Cole and see if he was able to keep up his dominance at Crisp. Hey race fans, Cole Denton back in the house. I drive the Meliella 46 INX Bandolera Bandit. I'll be giving you a race recap of this past weekend's double header at Crisp Motorsports Park. Race one, started pole, led every lap. There was a caution almost at the end of the race. And thankfully, I was able to hold off second and third place to pull off the first place feature win. Race two, qualified pole again, and got loose because there was some speedy dry after the late model race, and I was the first person to hit it and slide up the track, and second place went under me. But a few laps later, I was able to pass it back and hold off second place for the feature win. I'd like to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, Race Face Brand Development, and a shout out to FOJ Foundation. Bye everyone. Well, there you have it. That's 11 wins and 12 starts at Crisp. Cole will return to Crisp on September the 25th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Sheldon Creed, who will be at Bristol Motor Speedway for the Camping World Truck Series Uno 200. Can he go three in a row? Catch all the action Thursday night on FS1 at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And we want to say congratulations to Sheldon on his big announcement this weekend that he will be going to the Xfinity Series and racing for championship team Richard Childress Racing. And finally, Brody Moore will return to Madera Speedway for round eight of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series on September the 18th. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. And as always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.